This video is looking at how pH affects the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction. So if we just remind ourselves what pH is, pH describes the environment. Um, the environment could be neutral, pH of 7, which means it's neither acidic or alkaline. And as the pH number drops, we're becoming more and more acidic. The environment's becoming more and more acidic. And if the pH increases, the environment is becoming more and more alkaline. Now, enzymes are very fussy molecules, and they like just the right pH in which to work. A good environment where we can think about pH is in our digestive system. So our stomach is well-renowned for producing hydrochloric acid. So here we've got a pH of 2. If we compare that to our intestines, so here we've got our small intestines, our ileum. Here we've got enzymes operating in this environment where the pH is much higher. Um, so you could have a pH of about 8 in this environment here. So what we're saying is that the enzymes that work in the stomach and can survive and catalyze reactions here those enzymes wouldn't be able to work anywhere else or anywhere where the pH is different to pH 2. So let's look at our learning outcomes for this video. Um, we're going to describe first of all, uh, describe the effect of pH on enzyme activity and we'll do that by looking at a graph. Then we're going to be able to um, explain, we're going to look at explaining what we mean by the optimum pH. We're not looking at temperature here. And then we're looking to explain why pH affects the enzyme activity. So we're not looking at temperature, we're not looking at substrate concentration, we're going to explain why, temp why pH affects enzyme activity. So here's a typical graph looking at pH on the x-axis. So here we've got a pH which is um, low. So a pH of 2 here, here say we've got a pH of 4, and here we've got a pH of 6. So just making those numbers up, and here we've got rate of reaction, how quickly the substrate is acted upon. We can see that as pH increases, the rate of reaction increases until we get to an optimum. So this is the optimum pH for this particular enzyme. This is the pH that the enzyme will work at its fastest. When the pH increases we can see that the rate of reaction slows down until we come to this point here where there's no reaction at all and this point here where there's no reaction at all. So what I've done here is I've described what's happening. So what I need to do now is I need to explain um, what's happening here and I can explain the rate of reaction based on the shape of the active site of the enzyme. So if we look at these two points here there's no rate of reaction. In other words the active site um, does not fit the substrate or the, rather the other way around. The substrate doesn't fit in the active site. So here we'd say the enzyme is denatured. So at these pHs here, the enzyme is denatured. It doesn't work, and it doesn't work because the substrate will not fit in the active site. And that obviously means that enzymes that are lower than that pH and enzymes that are higher than that pH, they won't work either. So this is the sweet spot. This is the spot where the enzyme is actually active and reacts with the substrate. Now let's explain this optimum pH. So what we have here is we have the active site being the perfect shape. Now the substrate can fit inside that active site. As we move in this direction, as the pH increases, the active site shape is changing up to its optimum point. When the pH continues to increase 
here we see the rate of reaction going down and that's because we can explain that because the shape is no longer optimum the shape of the active site is changing and as a result the substrate doesn't fit in it as well and then just to finish these two points the active sites shape has changed completely and no longer will the substrate fit in so there's the explanation it might be worth you looking back at a previous video where you can look at that lock and key mechanism so you can see the substrate fitting in the active site